Hi everyone. Today, we are going to do spark plugs, the job that they perform in your engine, and the process involved in replacing them. So, let's get to it. Let's do geography first. The address, where does it live? The spark plug is kind of unique in that it has a physical presence outside your engine, and it also has one inside your engine in the harshest environment in there, where all of the fuel is burned, where where combustion takes place inside the internal combustion engine. And basically what it boils down to is this. At the precise moment that that new charge of fuel and air arrives inside your cylinder, your carburetor is fed it in there, as the piston comes up and compresses that mixture, at the exact right moment, a bolt of lightning jumps across those two electrodes, ignites that fuel and air mixture, it explodes, pushes the piston down, and powers you down the road thousands of times a minute. That's the way, that's fundamentals of internal combustion and the vital role that these guys play uh, in that process. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the what spark plugs are made out of, how they do their job, the tools that you need to take your old set out, put your new set in, and how you prep the new ones and what the old ones can tell us about the state of tune and the integrity of your engine when they're examined when they come out. So, let's get started. Okay, so we'll begin at the beginning. Your new spark plugs, things have to be done before they go in your engine. So, they all come out of the box pretty much the same way, notably with this protected and why it needs to be protected we'll get to in just a minute. First things first, you would take a look at your existing spark plugs and note whether the cap is required or not required. The cap that goes on your spark plug after it's installed that carries that electrical charge to it, that cap is going to be set up to either fit this way or this way. So it's important to remove that if you're supposed to be this. Next, we'll talk about spark plug gap, and that is the gap between these two electrodes. Your service manual and sometimes the manufacturer of the spark plug, be it NGK, Nippon Dentsu, Champion, whoever it might be, are going to have a specified distance, the gap from the center electrode to the outer electrode. And to adjust that, you don't stick a screwdriver in there and start prying things around. You spend the little bit amount of money that it takes and you get the proper tool for the job. And it's on a taper, graduated to let you know what the sizes are. And the edge of the tool is on a tapered thickness. So you can find where you are coming out of the box. You slide up until it gets a little snug. And if it needs to be a little wider, you can use the tool to pry ever so gently and that increases the gap and that gets you set where you need to be. There are a couple of different forms of this tool. This is another common one. It uses a wire instead of the tapered edge and the wire is what you use to measure the gap and it has these tools on the edge of it for altering what the gap might be. Either one of them works fine. Now we talk about something that's really important and we're going to touch on this when we go back to the cutaway and that is this washer. It's a fairly common practice to pull the spark plugs out of your engine and get a read on what is going on down here in that space that the plug occupies inside that combustion chamber, that harsh environment. The state of this can tell you a lot about what's going on inside your engine. So. The thing that separates the, the, the harsh interior environment from that outer environment is this washer, and it compresses. So when a new spark plug goes in, it has two tights. We'll cover that when we go back to the cutaway. It tightens when it goes in, and then it tightens again as this washer is compressed. It's designed to be compressed. And that's why if you're taking your spark plugs out to get a read on them, and that same set of spark plugs is going back in, you have to remember that the washer is pre-compressed and you're not two tights, you're one tight. 
to get to that specific torque value. It traumatizes the threads that these go in when that's not remembered. Then there's preparation to these threads and new spark plugs by almost every manufacturer that makes them, there's an, a coating on these threads to protect the threads in the cylinder head that they go into. However, it's not a bad idea, especially if you have an, a plug that's coming out and going back in, to put a little lubricant on these threads to protect the threads in the engine. And for that, you use an anti-seize product and you use just the tiniest bit on these threads when you spin that back into the engine. So that covers prep, right? What we need to do in order to prep an old plug that goes back in and what we need to do to prep a new plug when it goes in. Now let's talk about tools a little bit. Getting your spark plugs out and getting them back in, you're going to use the same tools to do that. There are sockets that you use on your ratchet that are specifically designed for taking spark plugs out and putting them back in. And the reason that we do that is because though you can drive a socket or drive a spark plug with a socket, a conventional socket, remember we're going to be lowering that spark plug into the engine in almost every instance. And if we put the new plug in and we're going to lower it in place, that's what you get. So a spark plug socket, which looks uncannily similar to a standard one, has a rubber insert inside it. And its job is to hold that spark plug in place. Another handy tool, an extension. Sometimes that spark plug's location is literally down a well. It's a long way from where it threads in to where your hand is on the ratchet. So having an extension is going to be mission critical and these are pretty neat in that unlike a standard extension these wobble so when you're getting those getting those two that are on your four cylinder machine those two that are cylinders two and three having something that gets you home makes a big, big difference in being able to get the plug started and getting it tight. All right, so that about covers it for tools, except for one other very important one. And for that, we're gonna go over to an engine we have in the engine stand over on the other side and show you that. And then we're gonna talk about putting in your new plugs. Our final tool, which in my view is an essential one for this job, believe it or not, is this. It's just a blow gun that you connect to an air hose. And we've talked about before and we'll talk about in the future, even a beginner has a small compressor because there are times when you need a burst of compressed air. And this job we're doing illustrates that point perfectly. And that is this. Your engine has an oil filter working really hard to keep dirt out of your engine. The intake has an air filter that's working really hard to keep dirt out of your engine. So you have to hold up your end of the bargain. If you pull your spark plugs out without clearing the debris out that's around that hole, as soon as it comes out, all of that accumulated road grime, grit, dirt, and sand, and everything drops right into your engine, the last place you want it to be. So that's why you got that little compressor, just so you could do this. And get all of that out of there then you don't have to worry about the dirt going in there. And out we come. And that, that's an old spark plug. And it doesn't have good news to tell us. Thankfully, this engine's coming apart, not going together. All right, we want to take a moment and talk about old plugs going back in. There are a couple of unique things about that. We mentioned earlier if a plug is going back in, it only has one tight, but there's some other things that we need to talk about too. And that is cleaning them before they go back in. The, the main contact to clean is the space between the center electrode and the outer electrode. So 
You can use all kinds of repurposed tools to do that. Your handy dandy Revlon nail file, a little piece of fine sandpaper, and you're just headed in there and doing a little cleaning. Whatever the tool is, especially if it's sandpaper, has left a little bit of its abrasive behind that needs to be rinsed away. If you're on the side of the road, then all you really have is you. But you want to rinse it with something that dries quickly. A quick drying contact cleaner. This is an essential tool in any workshop, and this is a good example of why you have to have it around. Okay, so our new plug, we know whether or not it needs cap or not. That's been addressed and snugged down. The gap on the electrodes has been set to where is recommended by the spark plug manufacturer and or the service manual for your motorcycle. And now there's only one thing left to do before it goes in. And we want to put a little bit of a coating on there. Again, that's particularly if you're installing, reinstalling an old plug and not putting in a new one. And doing that, because there's a lot of uses for this product, trying to use this, that's kind of like driving a thumbtack with a sledgehammer. Because we only want the tiniest bit on there. Threading it in distributes it all around the periphery of the threads. So, because you have your dedicated spark plug socket, you don't have to worry about the plug falling out as you're going down the well to install it. A couple of turns, get you started, and then you spin in loose, no ratchet, no extensions, no nothing. Extension on the top maybe, depending on how far you weigh are. And now you have arrived at snug. The first turns, it's not even a full revolution. The first turn is going to compress that washer that's designed to be compressed. And then you set the proper torque value for the spark plug. And for that, of course, you're going to use your torque wrench, one of those other essential tools for your motorcycle maintenance. A word to the wise, they are graduated in pounds feet on one side and newton meters on the other. If you mistake these two and set to a numerical setting in newton meters that's supposed to be in pounds feet or vice versa, then whatever you're tightening, whether it's a spark plug, axle nut, any of the other essential hardware that keeps you safe going down the road, then you are going to be either too loose, which is bad, or too tight. And if it's too tight and you strip a nut or a bolt, that's one thing. If you are too tight here, then you are going to ruin the threads that are cut into your cylinder head whose job it is to keep your spark plug home. And if you do that, repairing that is tedious, time consuming and expensive. So that's why you always use a torque wrench to do that second tight with a new plug or that first tight and only tight with a, with a plug that's going back in that's already been in once before. Okay, so as we talked about at the cutaway, we're in, we're snug, and now it's, fine, it's time to do a final tighten. So you set the torque wrench to the numeric setting that's recommended for that spark plug, for that engine. Lock the ring. Most of them have a lock ring. And then keeping in mind those fundamentals, it is always better to pull the wrench than it is to push the wrench. Tighten until you hear and feel that audible click and you are home. Once we're home, we're torqued and we're tight. The only thing left to do is remember that the spark plug cap that we talked about earlier that has the wire leading away from it that goes to your ignition coil. 
When this goes home, there's also an audible tactile feeling that you get from it. It is important that it go on and home in order to establish a good electrical contact. We're going to be talking about how to read those old plugs that come out and what they can tell you about engine internals and tuning for performance and all of the other factors that go into to the information that can be gleaned from them in another video. So we we'll hope to see you again. Hope you had a good time, learned a thing or two. Have a good one. Cheers. So you said I'm on the road and my spark plug could fall out. I don't usually drive around with a torque wrench. What do you do then? That's true. Yeah. Put it back in. That's, you, make, you, you raise a very valid point. I don't carry one of these out on the road. I, I've, never, I've never known anyone who carried one of these out on the road. If your spark plugs need to come out because you're diagnosing a problem or for whatever reason, then you're not going to be working with that. You're going to be working with something like this. Your road kit. Right. And that, that's what that spark plug socket's going to be on. So at that point, you have to default to how much did it take for me to break it loose and kind of catalog that in the moment and making sure that it's tight but not widening your stance and double handing it because tight a light tight is tight enough because of that compressible washer that's going to create that gas tight seal do you just blow out the dirt and grime before you? Yeah, at that at the side of the road, then then it's then it, you're the only compressor you have, so it's very much a yeah kind of thing. You have to you have to do the best you can.